Welcome to episode seven. Episode six was the left hook and that was by mistake. Um, episode six should have been the right hand. However, with some technical difficulties and I didn't want all you followers and all you people eagerly waiting to learn, so I released the lead hook before I did the straight. But ideally in the kickboxing academy system, I would have liked to have had the straight right, but because everyone's been loving the videos, everyone's been positive about it, I decided to release the, the lead hook before the straight hand. But let's get into the right hand and just when thinking about this, um, just remember that in the system, this happens, learning the straight right happens before the hook the jab today we're going to talk about our right hand I'm going to call it my right hand because there's different ways you can throw it and different ways you can call it it's called your right straight it's called your cross um, it's called your two and because I'm in an orthodox position it's going to be my right hand my rear hand my power hand and I'm going to show you different ways to throw it and you got to remember just as we discussed with the jab there's so many different th ways to throw a right hand it could be um, a straight, and I'm going to determine the difference between a cross and a straight. A straight is a punch that I'm not overthrowing my shoulder. Once I throw my cross and the punch crosses my center here, I'm now throwing a cross. So that's the difference between your straight and your cross. Very similar, it's just how much my right shoulder travels, and we're going to discuss that later on in the video on how to control the distance you throw your right shoulder. Starts with our good footwork. Just as we talked about um, in episode two, defensive versus offensive footwork. That offensive stance is what's gonna give you the power in your right hand. So pushing off the rear calf, having the transfer of energy, push over, you have your right hand and come back. So the timing of the step is very important. I can step and come back or I can step, plant, and throw two different timings. Both have different purposes. So I can step and back, so the timing of my foot landing and my punch landing at the same time, or there's a slight delay where the step happens and the right hand is thrown. Some key points when throwing it is keeping this right elbow in, the punch stays vertical, last two inches you're gonna turn focusing on landing with the two points. I wanna make sure my left hand stays up nice and tight and back from going from this position and back. The key is when having good power in the stance, you don't wanna, you wanna make sure you're not overstepping. I don't want my toe to be so far in front of my knee. That means a lot of my weight is on my back foot, which means I'm not getting full power and full weight into my right hands and into these knuckles. So I want to make sure I step and I return. And this way, my knee is on top of my foot. This allows me to sit on my punch and get more weight behind this hand. There's two questions that I always get. Why do I always keep a long stance? And there's a reason for that. This is kickboxing. And you want to kick after your punches. So if I constantly bring this back foot up, it's going to be harder for me to throw a kick. So I like to keep a longer stance. So there's different ways you're going to move the back foot. I can step, keep it long, or I can bring the back foot up, and this will allow me to get more power in my right hand. But the downside to bringing the back foot up is I have to step again in order to kick, where if I stay long in my first one, I have the room to kick. So depending on what you're doing, are you looking to finish with your hands or are you looking to set up some of your kicks? Big difference there. The other thing again, back to the footwork, is making sure our toe is pointing forward. I don't want to step out and have my heel coming out too much. The other key thing is loading up the right hand when you throw this. And one way I like to do it and build it in from the basic right hand is having a slight delay. And when I, if you see my shoulders, as I step, I bring my left side in front of me. That builds in defense to the straight punch, right from the basics. Even though the class or the person you're teaching might not understand why I'm narrowing that line and defending here, but it's a way to build in defense and it's gonna help them later down the road. So I'm keeping this hand up, it loads up my right power side, and I throw my right hand. So step, bang, you can see slightly coming in front to block any straight point and back into my position. The other thing I'm going to discuss is you can throw the two and it usually happens with the jab. So instead of that little shoulder um, movement to set up and load up the two, you're gonna step with the jab, 
to and back. So you have both options when throwing the punch. Side view, I can step and punch. I can step, bring the back foot up, or I can uh, fake the jab and throw, which is feints, which builds in feints. So I can, boom, I can fake the jab, move so many different ways to throw it, practice both. I like to have single, long, and back foot up from the beginners, reinforces good habits for intermediate and advanced level techniques. Back to one of my favorite ways on working any technique is a partner back and forth drill. Troy and Matt are just exchanging um, rear hands back and forth. Troy is an orthodox fighter, so his straight is coming from his right hand. Matt is a southpaw fighter, so it is his left straight. Both of these guys are just using that step in, throwing. They're keeping their stance long because it's a built-in enter and exit. Now both of them are going to throw the same right hand, but this time they're going to bring the back foot up and try to get more power behind the hand. So it's weighting the punch, getting more weight behind it. Now we can build in a simple jab cross and back. So now they're doing the jab cross, staying long in their footwork. They're staying in their offensive stance. Now they're going to do the same one, two, but bring the back foot forward, waiting, putting more power on their right or rear hands. A fun little way that I like to get my guys to build in good conditioning, good shoulder endurance and strength, I'll randomly call between the drill consecutive punching. So they're going to find each other's timing right away, stay long, getting full extension in their punch. And it's a good way to get your, your students or your fighters moving their shoulders because a lot of times they're very stiff in their shoulders. So here they're focusing on rotating their body and it's a good conditioning and shoulder workout. Five, four, three, two, one. Again, so many different ways to, to hit targets, um, to hit bags. I'm just going to go review and talk about them once again. Matt's using the traditional tie pad, which is a big target. So if you're a beginner, it's a lot more safe and confident to hit a big target. And you can go back and forth. Just starting off with long stance, I'll mix in my back foot up and I'll mix in the jab cross. Just showing you different variations. And we're going to actually build it into some triangle step, neutral stepping, which is episode three. Um, in the series. As you can see, even though I'm outside and Matt throws it up, I know how far I have to be from my target in order to hit and get full extension. Back foot up. Stop moving back. Same thing, adding the one, two. Nice and long first, so I can exit. Now I'm going to put focus on my right hand and bring the back foot up. Okay, we're going to bring in Troy. Same thing, we're going to use our punching shield, just focusing on the right hand, no jab this time. Just creating power, changing back foot up or not. And remember, every time you punch, you need to let that power out. That's why you're going to hear me make noise every time I punch. And our last one, a little bit more advanced style. Matt's going to be using the little mitts, and he's just going to throw movement and just getting flow and accuracy, landing the two knuckles. I'm going to mix in some feints, just like we talked about. One, two, 
some twos. Now we're going to move over to the bag. I'll show you some other bag drills we can use. So here I have my, my two professional fighters, Matt Special, Troy Sheridan. They're working the bag right now, just using different ways of landing the straight. They're professional fighters, so they're able to isolate it. Maybe they want to perfect certain techniques on it, or they mix it in with strategy. So you can sit there, use your jab, 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 and try to keep setting up that right hand. So make sure every time you hit the bag, there is a purpose, and you're not just hitting the bag. Whether the purpose is to be in good shape, to clean up the technique, always do something with a purpose. Okay, so we're going to really work this right hand on the long bag. Um, I talked about it on the jab, but some of the things I want you guys to really focus on, make sure you're not pushing that bag. We ta really talked about that on the jab. You want to be able to create as much power and snap as you can before hitting the target and returning. So when I'm going to throw this punch, I'm focusing on keeping my elbow in, turning last second, creating impact, and quickly pulling my hand back, not pushing the bag, creating impact. So you can see I'm hitting the bag as hard as I can and I'm trying not to, to get the bag to move back. So remember when you're doing bag work you don't constantly need to create all this output and energy. Sometimes it's very important to pick one strike and keep working it. In this case it's the right hand. So make sure again the key points keeping your elbow in, creating impact and pulling down. As you want to create a little bit more of an intermediate or an advanced drill, you can start mixing levels with where you want to punch, whether it's the head or the body. Back to my favorite pad, the wall pad. Why I really like this pad over the long bag is because this bag doesn't move and you really have to be good with your distance when working with a stationary target. So what I like to do is I really like to focus on changing distance and level and how close I am with my target. So if I'm in closer range, I want to be able to punch and still have full extension in my elbow. If I'm close, I don't really want to overthrow the shoulder because I'm jamming my punch. Everything needs to be as long and to get good impact, you need full extension in the elbow. So I'll constantly change ranges. And you're going to notice from this angle, if I'm close, I keep my right shoulder back. This way I'm not overthrowing the shoulder because I want extension. If I'm further back, I can release my shoulder a little bit more forward. I could even stand as far back as here. If I step, I can still reach my hand. One of the mistakes people make is they feel they need to get so close for that right hand. When realistically, you can stand out really far back, use your step, use your extension, and use your reach. A lot of people ask me like, oh, how do you, just because you're a tall fighter, um, doesn't necessarily mean you have good reach. Um, a, a shorter fighter can learn how to manipulate his elbow positioning, his shoulders, and still have more longer effective striking than the taller opponent. So keep playing with your distance and keep working different ranges for your right hand. So I'm going to discuss some common mistakes people make when throwing their cross. And the first one is as the cross comes out, that left hand always drops. And this is a shot you really need to be careful with for those big counter hooks and counter punches. So make sure when you're throwing, you keep one hand up. The way I explain to my beginners here at Bazooka Kickboxing is always have one hand on the phone. Whether you're throwing a jab, my one hand is on the phone. If I throw my cross, my one hand is on the phone. So making sure that hand stays up nice and tight. The second mistake people make is when they punch, they bring their hand down and they loop that punch. The straight punch is a straight punch. The punch has to come out straight and return straight. So making sure it's not looping, you're able to hit and back. 
The other mistake is elbow really coming out. So you'll see people really throw their elbow out when throwing the straight. Yes, that is a variation to the right hand, but when we're talking about the basic straight hand or the cross. So you really need to make sure that elbow stays in. The flight path keeps the elbow vertical. Bang, last two seconds you turn, focusing on these two knuckles. So just like the jab, you can do the same thing with your, your, your rear straights, keeping your shoulder against the wall really forcing yourself to keep the elbow in. Very simple drill, just a reminder, a visual, keep the elbow in, just like the jab. Another quality way is don't turn the punch out too soon. That causes the elbow to come out. So practice punching vertical, because when you punch vertical, it forces the elbow to stay in. If I'm turning too quick, my elbow's coming up. So think about vertical punching and turning over the last two seconds. There you have it, episode seven, uh, the straight right. Very important to make sure you take advantage of listening to those key mistakes, really perfect them, isolate the technique, stop going to the bag and throwing all these multiple combinations. It's very important you isolate each movement and make sure you perfect it and then put it into the overall system. And this is why this series is very good for you because it really isolates different parts of your training to improve then put into the bigger picture. The next episode, uh, we're gonna talk about the right hook since we already talked about the lead hook. Let's talk about that rear hook. Not one of my favorite strikes I like to throw a lot, but again, it's still very important to throw that with a surprise and with a lot of power. And that's what bazooka style kickboxing is all about. Technique and power. So keep following, thanks for the positivity and we'll see you in the next episode.